This is the motion detector. Uh, it's one of our uh, most popular sensors. Uh, it's used a lot in physics and physical science. It's used in the elementary book, the middle school book. So it's, it's used across uh, a lot of different areas there. Uh, let me give you just a quick overview of how it works. Uh, it actually uses echolocation and uh, uses ultrasound. So it sends out a pulse of sound uh, from the sensor. So it goes out, bounces off an object, and comes back. And uh, so it's really just measuring how far away the object is from the detector. And uh, so it's using this part uh, right here to do the detecting. A uh, couple things about it here. You can open it up. And when you open it up, there's a switch on the inside that allows you to set it for what you're trying to do. If you're going to do something like walk in front of it or toss a ball in the air, you'd like to have the switch on this setting. If you're going to use it with a card and track, you would put it on the other setting here and you're adjusting the sensitivity. Um, so that's uh, what that's for. Now, um, to obtain data, uh, all I'm going to do is plug it into the LabQuest, and it's a digital sensor, so it plugs in here at the top. And uh, so it starts clicking, and so that tells me that it's working here. And I'm going to put it on its back um, so I can move my hand up and down over the, um, the detector. If you look at the meter screen now, uh, it's actually giving a reading, and uh, if I put my hand up here, uh, you'll see that as I get closer to it that the number gets smaller. As I move my hand away, the number gets larger. So again, it's just measuring how far away I am from the detector. Now, if I want to collect some data, all I need to do is press the collect button in that uh, the lower left-hand corner. And uh, so I'm going to press collect. And I'll put my hand over it and move my hand up and maybe let my hand go back down. So it collected data for five seconds. That's the default for that. Uh, you can change that to make it longer or shorter if you want to. And uh, so now, uh, the upper graph, I have a position time graph. And uh, so as I moved away, we see that it go up. And as I move towards, it comes back down. The lower graph is a velocity graph based on the same data. So depending on what you're uh, wanting to look for, uh, you, can, you can do that. If you wanted to see just one of the graphs, uh, you can change it very easily by tapping on where it says graph. And you could do show graph, and I could show graph one. And uh, so there's just my uh, position graph. I could look at just the velocity graph if I wanted to, uh, but we can just leave it like this. Now, uh, once I have some data, I might want to do a little bit of analysis there. Um, and so I could go under Analyze, and there's a whole host of features there. What this is used for is that uh, maybe the students, um, they analyze this. They're trying to figure out how far away the object moved, maybe how rapidly it moved. So that the tie to mathematics is great. And one of the things that research shows about using this sensor is that the fact that students have a real-time interaction with the graph helps them understand graphical data. Uh, they do have some kind of kinesthetic experience. Maybe they're walking back and forth. And the students recognize that the graph means something uh, because they've done this motion. And they get the two things together. And that's a very powerful uh, feature to have because you're trying to get your students to understand what the graph means. And this is a great device for uh, making that happen. So again, um, it's used in a lot of the different areas, and uh, it's definitely a great sensor to have. It's very popular, and uh, students absolutely love using it.